Hello everybody, today's video may be the start of a little series. I came up with the idea to build a dashboard for my little Raspberry Pi. And for this, I bought this little LCD screen, which is also a touch screen. The plan is to get rid of this, which is a little remote sending on 433 MHz and controlling this little light up there, as you can see. So, let's dig right into it. Alright, so let's get rolling. What we have here is a 5 inch display for the little Raspberry Pi, the little transmitter for 433 MHz and a receiver. Now let's take a closer look at the display. It has a resolution of 800 by 480 pixel, has a built-in touchscreen, costs about 30 euros and therefore the quality is not the best. It offers a little paper with some configuration parameters which we are going to use shortly. But first of all let's connect it via USB and the HDMI cable for video output. And after turning the backlight on it just shows weird crap. But I guess that's ok, because it's not yet configured. I turn the display off again to not damage it and connect it to the my little Raspberry Pi. In the boot folder there is a config.txt and that's the file where we are going to put the parameters found on the little sheet which came with the display. There are already a bunch of configuration options but most of them are commented. So I just looked for a decent place where I can put my configuration and typed all that stuff down which was written on the paper. After that I just saved the file and rebooted the Pi and that's what happened. Voila, no more crap but a booting pie and a nice looking desktop image. Having the display ready it was time to connect the little receiver. Before we know what to send to the socket we have to read out the remote and look what it is sending. Therefore we connect the receiver in first place. We use plus 5 volt ground and GPIO pin 17 on the board. And the other cables you are seeing here are connected to a temperature sensor. I recently made a video on how to read out this sensor and save its data to a Google spreadsheet. The plan is to use this sensor in the next episode and display the information on the dashboard. After connecting this cable to the GPIO header on the Raspberry Pi, we connect it to the receiver, its ground, data and plus 5 volt BCC. To read out the data we need another library. We're using a Python library, RPIRF. Just install it using pip3 and check out the related library. This library will help us to easily transmit or receive data. We switch in the newly created RPIRF folder and in its subfolder scripts. We type RPIRF receive G17, which stands for GPIO port 17. And then it's time to push buttons. And here is what we see a bit of noise and a bit of useful data. You have to watch carefully what is interesting and what's not. Therefore it's probably useful to push the button a little longer. This causes at least my remote to repeat the sequence it is trying to send. So it turns out the on command is 5393 and the off command is 5396. One thing I noticed was not all of these remotes may work with these receivers. 
I have two sets of these sockets. The one with the remote on the left, the white one, works like a charm. The other one doesn't work at all. I have no idea why this is. But since I'm using the white one anyways, it was now time to replace the receiver with the transmitter. Back on the console using the RPI RF send command with the codes we just discovered, it was time to test the connection. And it became light. Woo! Replacing the transmitted code with the off value, it was dark again. So the preparation is done. To get the dashboard running, we need Node.js on the Raspberry Pi. You could just install it via apt. The thing is, you would not get a recent version. Therefore, we have to modify apt a bit by typing all this stuff, which you will find in the description of this video if you just want to copy paste it. And after a minute, you should be ready to check out my dashboard project. We use git again and clone the repository. It shouldn't take too long because it's not very huge right now. What will take a moment longer is to build all the dependencies coming with it. Therefore we type npmi, the i stands for install, and this fetches all required dependencies, will build them in whatever way necessary and prepare it to use with this project. This may take a moment. And after that, it is time to fire up the build process. The build process will take all the code written and form production optimized builds out of it. These builds are smaller in size and therefore faster when executed. If all of this worked as expected, it is now time to fire up the display. This is done by typing npm run pi, which should start the dashboard on the LCD display. There we have it. Uh, yeah, well, you might say, okay, this is a bit reasonable. And you are right, this is the very first, very first version of this dashboard. And it's just the beginning of the project. So there is a lot of room for improvement, I'm totally aware of that. But I will continue working on this project if you like it. So please, feel free to comment below and let me know what you think about it. And maybe this is just inspirational for others to get their projects running. So please, I'm very, very curious about what you think about this. Please let me know. For now, the code of this project is very, very static. As I said, this is really the first version. So please don't judge me too hard right now. There is more stuff coming. And yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and it would mean the world to me if you subscribe to my little channel here or if you just leave a like for this video. Thank you so much and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.